started now, yeah, right? Started. All right. I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm on. <laughs> well, praise God, everyone. How's there? I hope everyone is doing pretty good. Yeah, I've been off for a few weeks, and I'm back. I know you should notice you can tell I'm trying to grow my beard back, so got to look good some kind of way. <laughs> my wife sometimes says she don't really care if I have a beard or not, just as long as I don't cut my mustache off. I don't look very good with no mustache, see? Anyway, <laughs> well, I've been doing some praying and spending time with the Lord and everything for the last few weeks because I kind of sense that there's a change in the spirit, and I believe a lot of you all are starting to feel that change. Uh, what that is is uh, a lot of you all are going through like strong, I call them impasses. That's like something that you can't get around. Your emotions seems to go up and down. And a lot of that is because God is moving you into a position to be in a new place with him. Every time before God moves a person to another place in him, you, you have a, it, you, it's like you, become, you begin to be purged. All the junk that you haven't really dealt with begins to come to the surface. The Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention so you can let go of it. Before I get into any more details with that, I, I got to do the announcements. My wife is not here today with us because she's not a little under the weather, but that's fine. She's getting her healing. So I'm doing what she normally does. My name is Greg Boyd or Gregory Boyd or Gregory Christopher Boyd, <laughs> but you can call me Greg Boyd for short. Uh, we're here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are happy that you guys are logged in. Uh, we thank God for you all. This is our ministry right here. Uh, we do this every two weeks. Station in uh, we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but we move our ministry is mainly in Sacramento, California. Uh, and so we just thank God that you all are coming in to see what we do. And so it's the it's the word of God, and whoever comes and receives it, it will bless them wherever they at and whatever country that they're in. So this is what I do. I sometimes I ask myself, who's out there listening to me? But God, God, let me know. It's not about you. Thank God. <laughs> It's about me being obedient to what he tells me to do for you all. So we've been at our church for almost 18 years, um, faithfully there. And um, so we've learned so much about the move of the Spirit and, and applied a lot of the teachings that I teach today. Uh, I've, I've applied, we have applied it to our lives, and we have seen the change that we've been wanting to see, enough to be able to minister it. So... Um, I uh, also want to mention that is there are some of you all that's at the clubhouse in Sacramento, California. And if you feel uh, that these meetings are a blessing to you, we will appreciate it that you give. The money doesn't go to us. It goes to renting the clubhouse that we're using. We rent it out for like, they rent it to us for like $75 per service. So we thank God for all the, the offerings, that the money that comes in for the for that clubhouse so so I just thank God for you all uh, being patient with us and everything like that and and learning from us and everything we've been doing this for a little over three years now and uh, and every year God does something different so now we are reaching more countries uh, now we have New Caledonia we have Portugal if I can pronounce these places right uh, we have um, Cameroon uh, Africa we have uh, France, we have um, New Zealand, they on right now, uh, hello. So we have uh, in different cities in the United States. Um, so we just thank God that somebody is actually listening to us. All I know he tells me to do is you just keep fasting and praying and dying and I will work through you because it's not about you and your wife, it's about me being able to reach the people through you. So that's why we do what we do. Uh, our website is, uh, I, if I can remember it, because I'm normally going to mess with all this computer stuff. My wife and, and other people help me out. Uh, it's uh, www.gregandninaboysministries.org. Uh, and if you want to be a blessing and give, we, we appreciate it. So you can look on there and see what we got going on and be a blessing. So anyway, I'm learning to say these about the finances because I normally don't never ask for finances because I just believe God and it comes in but now as the ministry is beginning to grow more and more now I'm starting to step out and talk about 
few things here and there that we're believing God for. So, commercial is over. I'm ready to get started. <laughs> okay, um, I talked about earlier today, I preached for France and, and uh, uh, Europe and all those countries over there. I talked about the title of the message was um, was um, operating out of both rims. And so the Lord began to talk to me about a couple of days ago. He spoke to my heart, impressed on my heart, to begin to uh, teach the same message twice. So you can, so you all can begin to, I'm just going to come from different angles with it and everything like that. It's going to be the same message I taught earlier, but it's going to be, I'm just changed the title, but I'm also going to, I'm going to talk to you all on a different level from when I talk to other people in other countries, because... This is the way the Lord is, is leading me. But what I would like for you all to do is come expecting. When you come to these meetings or you come to hear me teaching, come expecting to hear something for you. Don't Because I can sense in the spirit if you're pulling on me or not because I began, when you're pulling on me, how do you pull on a person in the spirit? You pull on them by uh, expecting to receive something for you. Some of you are all like in Colorado, uh, different other cities and different other countries that are watching this. Some of, some of you, some of you all are, are, are up uh, very early in the morning watching this. Just as say to yourself, Lord, I want, I receive what you have to say to me. And by doing that, when I'm teaching, I find myself teaching on something that I haven't I may, I'm, I have my, my, all my scriptures here, revelations that the Lord spoke to me about. But a lot of times when you all are pulling on me, I don't really touch any of that. I talk about exactly what needs to be talked about for this hour, this day, and everything. And that's the way I prefer to minister. I, I don't really like the notes as much as I used to. I usually, I usually have notes that keeps me from going off course. So I, I have notes of a um, uh, 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 three-point message here, but I normally, nine times out of ten, I don't normally even touch it. I just normally just teach from my spirit. And I just try to stay focused because I don't want to get off course because I'm teaching. But when I'm in a, when I go out in meetings or something like that, I may touch on my notes a little bit, but I mainly flow out of my heart. And uh, that's the best way to preach, I believe, or to teach, is teach from your spirit. And believe it or not, I'm still learning how to yield over to the Holy Spirit when it comes to, to teaching. So enough of that said. I do want to say this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Because the more you hear a message and the more you hear it, eventually you will begin to understand it. And once you begin to understand it, because the Holy you gave the Holy Spirit what he needed to cause the understanding to come to you, then you can begin to walk in it and apply it to your life. You know, I, I've had a lot of, I'm on Facebook, a lot of you all know that I'm on Facebook. Um, I have a lot of people that's like, some of these people have been with me for for years. And they some of them calling me or texting me and they need prayer. And it's normally, it's not the things that that's way out there. I mean, I mean, it's just, I feel like giving up. I feel like I'm, I just can't take it. I, I feel like life is just beating me down. And I and what I've been doing lately is I let them know nicely and with the love of God that if you're going through something like that, why don't you go to my I, all my videos that I have? Because if I say anything to you, it's going to be the same thing that I'm teaching. So I'm not going to invent something else just for you. I can do that if the Lord moves in that direction. But I noticed that 95% of my counseling it's really the word of God, common sense. No offense. I'm not saying it negatively. Uh, a lot of my counseling that I do to people is basically things that I have learned in my past concerning the word of God. And it's probably by less than not 5% that the Holy Ghost may move on me to, to give some direction to, to a person or whatever. But majority of counseling that I do is mainly the word of God. And uh, the biggest question I have that people ask me all the time is I want to know the will of God for my life. And I, now what I'm doing, instead of me trying to explain to them how to get quiet, go to my tapes. Go to my, I call them tapes so you can tell how old I am. Go to, go to the videos that I have on the website. 
uh, on YouTube. And you can look the headings up and you can find exactly what you need. Because I, I looked on there, I think I have something somewhere between 30 to 30 something videos on it. Uh, so it's like I'm practically, the Holy Spirit has had me touch on different subjects so you all can, can have something to go back to and listen to. And that's why I put it on there so you all can, uh, if you get refreshed in some of the teachings that I, I have done. So anyway, I'm going to go and get started here. Today, I'm, this message is called, In Christ You Are Powerful. I, I thought of that. I was going to use the same, the same title I used uh, this morning when I taught. Uh, I used Operating Out of Both Rims Part 1. But um, I'm going to change the title because I really want to hit home on some certain things that I'm teaching on. Okay, let's get started. Father, I just thank you right now for everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice or watching this video or, or watching it on YouTube right now. I thank you that they will receive what they came here for. Father, I thank you that your love and your grace will saturate each and every person that's here listening or watching the video or whatever. Bless them, Father. Have opened their eyes of their understanding that they may be able to receive what the Holy Spirit is trying to get across to them. And I bind the devil and what he may try to do to hinder you from receiving what God has already given you. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. All right. I want to talk today about in Christ, you are powerful. Every Christian, <clears throat> that every person that accepted Jesus Christ, they are more than conquerors. A lot of you may not feel like a conqueror because of whatever, whatever's been thrown in your lap or whatever's coming against you right now. But you are, you are a light on a hill. You are, you are a city. You are actually a walk. It's like you are a walking city with everything that you're ever going to need. But it's like, like I always say, that you're like a rich man or a rich woman in the unemployment line and don't even know you own the building. Isn't that something? You have everything that you're ever going to need in this life because you are in the family of God. But it's like when we hear a message like this, we receive it at that moment and we feel like conquerors until we go home and face the things that we're dealing with, our bills, our Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, kids, job situation. Uh, it causes us to, 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 to put our guards down and say, I'm not more than a conqueror. Because if I was more than a conqueror, I wouldn't be going through all these changes that I'm going through. But man, I'm telling you, whatever you're going through should not dictate who you are in Christ. Because in Christ, that basically means that you are in the family of God. You are in Christ. You are in the family of God. So that means everything that our Father God owns, it belongs to us. Some of you all are saying, well, why come I don't have it? Hmm. You don't have it because you are expecting it to just fall on you. It's not going to fall on you. Salvation didn't fall on you. Salvation was freely given to all of us. But it's up to us to accept it. How do you accept it? By saying that it's mine, I have it now. I'm, I'm putting it in a nutshell, what I'm going to be teaching on. But then I'm going to break it down. I'm going to talk about Adam. I'm going to talk about how he operated. And I'm going to talk about his mind, how incredible his mind was. And then we're going to go into other subjects. You are more than a conqueror. You are great. God, when he looks, if you want to say he looks down or whatever, when God the Father looks at you, you, the person I'm talking to right now, he doesn't see this bald head. <laughs> I got a nice hairdo in the spirit realm. I have actually a fro. Anyway, <laughs> he doesn't look at your flaws or he doesn't see your inse insecurities or what he will. He doesn't see scars on you. He see you in Christ. He see you. He sees your new nature. He sees your born again spirit, which is perfect. 
he doesn't see all of the dirt, all the testings and trials you've been going through. He doesn't look at that. That's not what he's concerned about. He's watching and seeing perchance that you may actually listen to your teacher that's living on the inside of you and do what he's telling you to do. A lot of problems that a lot of you all are going through, you have the answer, but you are expecting it to come a certain way. I, I did the same thing, especially when I'm dealing with people that got devils or situations like that. I stopped trying to cast the devil out. I go, I do cast the devil out, but I listen on the inside on how to deal with this particular person with this particular spirit. And then he tells me what to do because I'm learning how to be quiet and listen for a chance that I may hear him speak through my conscious. We talked about that a few weeks ago about the conscious, the consciousness or voice of your new nature. It's the, vo it's the voice of your born again spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks through your conscious and you hear it and it doesn't sound like the Ten Commandments. <laughs> it sounds just like you. And that's how he speaks to you. When I learn to follow my that inward witness inside of me, my conscience, when he's that still small voice, or he may show me a vision, or he may show me a dream. I don't have as many dreams like most ministers or people in, in, the, in general. They have a lot of dreams. I have a dream. I don't know. He doesn't, I don't receive, I don't, he doesn't use me with dreams that much. But I do have, he may show me visions, or he may give me a word. Or whatever they think I'm supposed to walk around have a word for everybody I don't I don't care to know I used to I used to like man, show me everything about everybody but then I begin to realize when he does show me things it's everybody's pretty much going through the same things they mad at God a lot of people are very angry at God they blaming him for everything but their action their words that come out their mouth are saying that I'm not mad at God I love God but in their heart they bitter because they believe it's God's fault that they're in the situation that they're in. But it's not God's fault. It's, it's your fault, the person in the mirror. Because you have a teacher, the Holy Spirit. He speaks your language. He speaks the way you can understand it. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let's get started. I wrote this down. I said there are two realms, spiritual realm and a natural realm. The wonderful thing about Adam, before he fell... He was able to operate out of both of those realms. I said this earlier. I said that a, an action, a, an action in the natural, would not necessarily cause a reaction in the spirit. So, if you're trying to do things in the natural to get God to move on your behalf, it doesn't work that way. But an action, and an action in the spirit, would always cause a reaction in the spirit. Basically, when you operate in the spirit. It's going to change your circumstances in the natural. And, and that's the way Adam operated when he walked this earth. He, he operated out of his spirit. He operated, well, he, was, he didn't have no sin in his life. Yeah, he didn't have no sin in his life. And as well as he, he did not have a cloud over him. Most people say that Adam, I've read, heard stories that Adam must have had a glory cloud over him. He didn't know that he didn't have any clothes on or whatever. No, I don't think he had a glory cloud over him. I heard all kinds of things that he had over him. No, Adam was basically, he's, his conscience was so real to him that he was in total contact with the Father that he didn't, those things didn't concern him. But when he fell, that's when his conscience began to, it's almost like you turn a light on and a light off. i just give an example. Oh, I bet I messed with that light. It may not come back on. <laughs> It's like you, you turn the light on you, and then you turn the light off. That's exactly what happened to him. When the light was on, his spirit is alive unto God. When you turned when he committed this, when he was disobedient to the Father, his spirit became dark. In other words, he lost he in other words the light was turned off because he was out of fellowship with the Father. And that means he had that nature became death. That means if there wasn't a redeemer for Adam, then when he left, he would have went straight to hell. Every person that's ever born were on their way to hell because of that disobedience that he did. So that's why he sent the redeemer, which is Jesus, which at that time was called the word. And then he came and came down here as Jesus Christ to change and cause his father to become our father. So 
I said Adam had the ability to operate out of both realms before the fall. Okay. I said his fleshly mind, his fleshly mind was a servant to his spirit. Adam, Adam's mind was a servant to his new nature. Well, I won't say, I won't say. I said his a spirit that was alive unto God. So whatever, whatever the Lord talked to him about, he looked at him and see perchance that he watched him. Uh, do the things that he told him to do. He said, name all the animals. Adam operated, this is, this. now this is me talking, but I, when I look at the word, I can almost say, it's right. Hear me out. <laughs> Adam operated out of 100% capacity. His brain was 100%. I mean, he, he was able to name all the animals on the planet during that time, and he remembered the names and everything. Because his brain was so pure from sin that his that his uh, his spirit he was in total his conscience was so alive unto God that he can hear the, the Father when he speaks to him and he rise things. So he because they said I wrote this down I'm, I'm gonna get to it in just a second. Uh, let's look at um, Genesis two nineteen. Uh, I really like this subject right here when it talks about Adam how smart he was. I, I taught on this a while back but. It, he brought it back up to me again to teach on it when it comes to in Christ and everything. Okay. Genesis 2.19. It says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the fields and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. I mean, he gave the responsibility over to Adam because Adam at that time was the God of this world. I thought he always was the God of this world. No. When he committed, when he became disobedient to what God had told him a long time ago to do, that's when he lost his dominion to what, we, what the word of God calls the serpent, which his name changed to Satan. Uh, Satan. So Satan is the God of this world system. Adam is not, Adam, when he lost it, he get, it was given over to Satan. But we're not, we're not talking about that right now. I just want to talk about how God worked through him. And how he gave him the responsibility because his because he was operating at 100 percent capacity he was able to god could just tell him what to do and he just did it oh man okay okay where did i leave off and and adam to see what he would do would call would call the animals and what whatsoever adam called every living creature that was the name thereof wow now this is something i i i, I looked up and read on it a little bit and i just put it all together. I said, um, the world scientists say that the average human has the ability to only operate at 10%. They say the bigger the brain, this is really funny to me, the, they say the bigger the brain, the smarter the person. Scientists say we have 100 billion neutron, neuron, neutron, I was going to say neutrons, but it's neutron neutrons, whatever, and trillions of supportive cells. In other words, scientists, they say that the bigger person's brain is, I got a big old head, that means I'm smarter, which in the natural is true, but I, I don't think Adam had a big old head, you know. No, Adam had the normal size head, but because 10%, I feel that 10% is basically almost a borderline genius, pretty much. So that tells you exactly where a lot of us are walking at now. I'm not mentioning any names because then I have to look at myself. <laughs> uh, a lot of us are walking probably a little less than 10%, uh, around 8 or 9, but 10% is close to genius. Uh, I, I was talking to bon, uh, Bernard earlier today. He said Albert Einstein, he operated out of 34% capacity. I mean, we know that he's pretty much a genius. But uh, a lot of us actually average around nine to ten percent, a nine or eight or whatever. So, what I'm trying to say is that Adam he operated out of ten percent, a hundred percent capacity because the ten percent is the natural. The the ninety percent is rest of that is spiritual. So all of his knowledge and understanding it came from the spirit realm, and then it, and then he was able to operate in it in the natural realm. So a lot of his brain capacity, I feel, 
was it was it was his spiritual brain because yes you do have a spiritual brain it your hand is just like it's just like a glove my hand my spirit hand is inside of this hand my eye spiritually is not up here or in my belly my spirit is in my belly because the bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water you know it wasn't talking about your belly it was talking about your innermost being that's your where your new nature is that's where your spirit man lives it lives right but right behind this flesh so to speak uh so my eyes ears are all in the same location so when i say my spiritual mind i'm talking about my spiritual mind it's right here so he operated a lot he operated in a hundred percent brain wise i believe as well as spiritual wise. so it's like he was in constant contact with god he had the holy spirit that was living on the inside of him adam the same thing we have pretty much he, because Jesus became the second Adam, so he got the same equipment pretty much as Jesus had, because he became the second Adam. I'm gonna get into that. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Okay, all right. So I said before the fall of Adam, his spirit mind was more real to him. His spiritual mind was more real to him, so he didn't have a cloud over him. He was just, he just had a body like all of us. He just wasn't concerned or aware of his no clothes or whatever, because he was. All about doing the father's business like we supposed to be doing okay I said when Adam and Eve disobeyed God that's when they died spiritually uh, basically they they pretty much died spiritually their spirit became they began to get this, the spirit of the one that told them what to do which was a serpent so they have his spirit living on the inside of them and this and that spirit that was alive unto unto God is gone so now that's why you have to be born again to begin to get that new nature. That's why we call it the new nature. You now have the same spirit of the second man, Adam. But when he fails, when he's failed, um, I'm going to go right here and read that now. I feel like I'm jumping ahead of myself here. I say when Adam and Eve uh, disobey God, that's when they die spiritually soon began to operate out of the natural mind. They became aware of themselves naked. Um, so, in other words, when they when they when they disobey God, the part that makes me laugh, I used to believe this, but I now that I know what the word says, I don't believe it anymore. That it was all the woman's fault. Because man, we'd be all right if it wasn't for the woman. Man, I tell you, women are from Venus or from Mars or whatever they say, and we're from planet Earth, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> no, what? Well, if Adam Adam was right there. When Eve took that forbidden fruit, whatever it was, and when she ate off the tree, she gave it right over to her husband, which was Adam. Adam, you have to understand something. Adam was here a very long time. Most people think that he was only here for five or six days before uh, before Eve came along. No, 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 no. Adam was here a long time. I don't know how long, but he was here a very long time. And um, he knew what God told him not to do. But then when Eve came along, even if Eve had eaten the forbidden, what if Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit and Adam would have said no? He would have, everything would have, nothing would have happened. I mean, in other words, because he ate it and because he was responsible, that's when things changed. So I, I don't blame her, I blame him. So, so now we know. So we know it's not the woman's fault. It's our, it's man's fault. We was given a responsibility, and we decided to do what we thought what was right, and that was wrong. I want. I, she said, it "Tastes good. I'm gonna go and give it a try." And then that's when his eyes of understanding begin to be open. Uh, it says that in uh, Genesis three seven. Actually, I'm going somewhere with this. So just bear with me. <laughs> uh, Genesis three seven says, "And the eyes of them both." were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves an apron so what happened was it was like when they eat when they ate their forbidden fruit it's like their spiritual mind got dark just like turning the light off and then I then they stopped operating out of their spiritual mind and begin to operate out of their natural mind so in other words your mind, your fleshly mind, is a servant to your spirit, spiritual mind. 
when they eat that when they ate that forbidden fruit and became uh, spiritually dead, their spiritual mind began to wake up, and then now it's, it, the tables begin to turn. The the spiritual the fleshly mind the spiritual mind became a servant to the fleshly mind. You understand what I'm saying? Because when Adam was walking the earth, he was walking totally in the spirit. He was walking out of his conscious. So his his natural mind just did exactly what his spiritual mind told it to do. But now he he died spiritually. Now his 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 uh, spiritual mind does what the natural mind does. So who's teaching the natural mind? The news. Well, we in we in we in twenty first century now. The news. Um, Problems, circumstances, whatever. So when we get overwhelmed, we believe that those problems are more real than what we're supposed to have as Christians. Uh, a spiritual mind. And the spiritual mind hears from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is like locked in a jail cell because he can't do anything because you would not yell over to him to hear what he has to say. So does he have to yell it through the jail? Go pray. Because when you pray, you start listening to me. But no, what happens is a lot of us, we tend to try to work things out in our own strength. That means operating out of your natural mind, letting your spirit follow your, your mind. Why, in turn, it's supposed to be listening to the Holy Spirit and following that new nature. But the part I want to really get to is right here. Uh, I, I wrote this down. I said it was like their natural mind woke up and the spiritual mind was disconnected. That's what happened when he fell. But I, it's just something I wanted to talk to you all about was when Adam, when, um, when Adam and Eve, when they fell, that was a time that God would speak to them and they would hear him from the, they would hear him from pretty much from the inside out, pretty much. Just like we, he talked to their spirit. Because they were so alive, it was just like him talking out loud to them because they were it was it was from the it was it was listening to him from their new nature that born that that spirit that spirit that was alive unto God, and then they just basically did what was told of them to do, uh, what they was responsible for. But when they committed the sin, they became spiritually dead. Then it, uh, I don't have it down here, but Genesis three eight talks about how God called for them, and they hid because they heard him walking. They so. I thought, in my mind, I always looked at that as um, that Adam was basically, he was still hearing God and talking with God the way he did before he fell. No. God had to talk to him like, like he wasn't his child anymore. He had to talk to him in their minds. You understand what I'm saying? Because see, in the Old Testament, they, did not hear, they, they didn't hear God the way we hear God in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will come on the people and then lift off of them and I think does a service because they're, they're spiritually dead people. So that's when prophets will come and says, that says the Lord, get your life in order because you're going to die. Because they were very hard because they were dealing with spiritually dead people. The same as Adam after he fell. So I tell people, we are not in that dispensation anymore. We're now in the dispensation of love. That's why I teach on love, the love of God all the time, because that's who we are now. We are children of love. We are like a, a, a walking image of love. I don't feel like it. That's because you don't know who you really are. So that's my, my goal in life, and your goal in life should be that I'm going to walk in love with everyone. Because that's, that's my character. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, that's who you really are. But until you begin to focus on those areas and let it become a way of life by believing it and confessing it, then it's going to become a part of you. Then you can walk in it. So, with the situation, what I, I guess what I was trying to say with the prophets today, we don't. I don't curse people and tell them, "Thus says the law, you're going to die." I don't do stuff like that. I try to, even though if I give a person a bad word or whatever you want to call a bad word. I, number one, nobody would never know about it because I do that behind closed doors because I don't want to hurt the person. I try to walk in. I will rebuke them, and they will have to go home and figure out that I rebuked them because that's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, no, you're supposed to tell them like it is. Tell them like it is. No, that's how Old Testament people did things. We're now living in the New Testament. I tell people in love that they need to do this and they need to do that and they need to do that. 
because that's who I am. I am a man of love. I don't feel like I'm a man of love. You may not feel like it, but you are a man or woman of love if you're born again. So God had to, he had to change the way he talked to them. He had to talk to their minds. He had to tell them that, that, that why, who told you that you don't have any clothes on? Because I didn't tell you that. So they, but when you look at the scriptures, it looks like he was talking to them always the way he's been talking to them. But no, he had to change the way he dealt with them because they were no longer his children. You understand that? He loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should have everlasting life. He loved the world so much that he, he had his son Jesus to come down here to make a way for his father to become our father. Uh, other than that, every person that's ever born in this world will be going straight to hell. But because he made a way, we don't have to go to hell. That's the worst thing in the world for a person to do is to die and go to hell and realize that they really did not have to go there. Just think about that. That's 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 jacked up. I'm sorry. I'm using some crazy words here, but it's jacked up. It's bad to go to hell and be there for eternity and realize that you really didn't have to go there because all I would all I had to do was accept. I, I didn't even really have to repent. Oh, wait a minute. You're supposed to repent. Not when you get born again because he washes all your sins away. You accept him in your life. You ask Christ to come into your heart. He washes you. I don't have to. I, if I had to go back and repent for everything I did, I'd be there for 16,000 years. Till. I remember I threw a spit wad at my teacher. I remember I put a tack in his one teacher. Anyway, I was pretty rough back then. But anyway, <laughs> no, you ask God to forgive you. No, no, you ask God to come into your heart, and then he automatically washes your sins away. But when you be a backslider, then you have to repent. Because now you're back in fellowship with God. But now when you accept Christ in your life, he instantly get rid of that old stony heart like the Bible calls that deaf nature that you received when you were, as you got older into the age of accountability. That some people, we believe that it's at the age of accountability is around 12 or 13 or whatever. And once they begin to know right from wrong, then they, they have to be born again. Okay. So now that's why we say born again. Because when they first born into this world, they're not born again. Most people say, "Well, they 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 born again." Now they're in the age of, of at the age of innocence. So they basically uh, have to be born again. They, that's when they, when they get to the age of accountability, they have to receive Christ, and then they that nature will. You know what I'm trying to say? Man, I'm having fun here. I'm so used to talking. I was talking to you on my bigger screen, but we had some problems, so now I've been using a laptop. So that's why it's a little bit different. I'm still in the process of getting used to it. <laughs> All right. So now we know that God, when he spoke to Adam, that he, he spoke to him like he, was, uh, he wasn't he was his child anymore. So he had to speak to his mind because his spirit is dead. You understand? So now that's why he brought Jesus and everything to correct it. All right. Let's keep going here. I have, actually, I have a lot here. It was like their their natural mind woke up and their spiritual mind was disconnected. Then I wrote this down right here. I said, uh, um, "They, uh, that's when, that's when they became more aware of their natural abilities." So, in other words, when they fell spiritually, they be, their natural mind woke up, and then their mind began to tell their spirit to follow, follow them, and they began to become more aware of pain and more aware of a woman having babies. With when she have a baby, it's going to be pain and everything like that. And so all those things became a part because they're not no longer spiritually beings anymore, so to speak. They're more naturally minded. So Adam's brain was operating at a 100% capacity. But when he began to switch over like that because he was disobedient, disobeyed God, his brain began to operate at less than less than 100. I believe I don't believe that he operated instantly at a, at 10%. I think that happened over a period of time that the mind began to become more and more focused on on the, uh, the things of, uh, of this world system. And so now they operate naturally at 10 percent now. But the Bible does say that, the, that we're going to become weaker and wiser. And the way I look at that is like we're going to become more um, weaker spiritually and wiser when it comes to the things of the world system. 
but they're still going to be operating at 10 percent can you imagine that adam was operating at 100 percent because his conscience was so alive unto god that he wasn't even caring about the things that we that he that he's caring was caring after he failed he began to care about the things of the world you know but he was he was perfect he was actually perfect and he failed because he disobeyed god man that's incredible so uh, i wrote this down i said when adam and eve committed the sin of disobeying their father god he could not deal with them like sons and daughters anymore okay god talked to his children in their spirit he had to talk to them in their natural mind god doesn't speak to our minds he speaks to our spirit now that we're new testament believers he spoke to the people in the old testament in their minds because they weren't born again i said now the tables is turned and i talked about that he was operating at 100 percent now he's down to now eventually over a period of, of thousands of years now mankind is pretty much operating at 10 percent because god is not in they don't think about god anymore okay um i said because of disobedience his spirit lost contact with god that's how that has all knowledge and now he is subject to his own mind and natural things to teach him now his mentality only operates at 10 percent okay now let's get over here i i went back like that because what i want to do is do a series i feel like i'm jumping around because this is a new subject and i usually do that when i get a new subject until i feel more comfortable with it um I want to be teaching on this subject for maybe a couple of weeks about who we are in Christ. And because we became born again, like it says in 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17, I believe. I'll uh, hear this right here. I said, if there's any man that's in Christ or any woman that's in Christ, we are new creatures. Uh, we are new beings. Uh, we are new species. Old things have passed away. What are the old things? The old things that he's talking about is that death nature that we received from Adam when we hit the age of accountability. So that's a that death nature. That nature is like you could be the nicest person in the world. You can walk every old lady across the street or whatever. You you still want to die and go to hell because what takes you cause a person to go to hell is by not accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But really, Jesus has already paid the price for the whole world. All they have to do is accept it. Now, isn't that interesting? All we have to do is accept Jesus Christ in our life. We did that. We are now born again. I'm actually in God's eyes. He doesn't see my flesh. He's, he doesn't see white or black or whatever you want to call. He, he sees that nature. You see that glowing nature on the inside of this flesh. He sees a perfect great boy. He sees a perfect whoever you are. So, but we, because our minds are not renewed, we still think like we're not born again. We still think like we have to. We're, in other words, we're still using our mind to tell our spirit what to do. You know, instead of using your born again spirit, your new nature to tell you, tell your mind what to do. But we, we got it all mixed up. So a lot of us go through life building big churches, building big things and this and that. And God never told that person to do that. It's a great work. But because God never told you to do it, guess who's responsible for that work? The person who built it. So our job is to do exactly what he tells us to do and learn to live our lives according to our new nature live our lives according to our born again spirit and when we begin to live our lives according to our born again spirit our brain capacity begins to heal itself and eventually we begin to go up the notches as far as our mentality because we're not listening we're not listening to our minds per se we're listening to the holy spirit is becoming our mind the mind of christ we're learning to operate the way we're supposed to operate that's why uh, I said, in Christ, you are powerful. We are all of God's children are powerful because we have at our disposal, we have angels. We have the Holy Spirit all knowing. All he knows, everything there is to know about you. And we have God the Father. Everything that Jesus did, it was because of 
God working in Jesus to cause those things to happen. God the Father worked in Jesus to accomplish, to bring us back unto himself. So just think about that. So that means everything that Jesus did down here, he did not do it in his strength. That's another, that's another sacred cow in a lot of people's teachings and beliefs. They believe that because of uh, Jesus, we can never measure up to Jesus. You know what? I can never measure, none of us can never measure to Jesus' deity. He's in heaven now. We can never measure up to his power that he has there, but we can actually measure up to him when he walked the earth. Because he said, I came here as, a, as an example. The same equipment that Jesus had, we have it. Because we're now in Christ. You see what I'm saying? So, we now, he's the second man, Adam. That means everything has changed now. We are now a child of God. That means Jesus can go to the Father and receive things when he was on the earth. I can go to the Father and receive things from my Father. Because he's now my Father because of Jesus. So I look at Jesus differently. I don't have any disrespect for him because he's, he's my Savior. But I look at it the way he wants me to look at it. I don't look at him that I can never attain to the works that he did. He said, works that I did and greater works that you, you should do. What are the greater works that he's talking about? Well, he's talking about the greater works. Is he's gonna, we're going to raise the dead and we're going to do that. Yeah, we're going to do that too. But the greater works he was talking about was we're going to be getting people born again. And getting them into the real, we're going to begin to operate in the ministry of uh, reconciliation. We're going to be getting people to let them know that you don't have to go to hell. I, I, I almost got in trouble when I made the statement a long time ago. I said that um, I don't care if you are a drug addict or a prostitute or a stripper or whatever. My job is not to tell you how to live. In other words, I'm not going to come to you and tell you that you got to do this and you got to do that. Or you got to quit your jobs and you got to do that. I'm not there for that. I'm there to tell you about the person that can help you get your life together. That's all I'm there for. And once I do what he tells me to do, I leave that responsibility for God to do the increase on them. He said one, one person of uh, Apollo's water, uh, one person will uh, plant the seed and Apollo's water, and he said he does the increase. I'm there just to plant the seed or water the seed. And then God is the one that's going to do the increase and change the person's life. That's the ministry of reconciliation. I'm not there to bang the, the Bible on anybody's head. Uh, I'm there to tell them about the person who could teach them how to flow with the person on the inside of them to help them get out of the situation that they're in. Like a lot of young, when I used to work as a prison guard years ago, a lot of them went, became repeat defenders because um, they couldn't find a job. Uh, they, they get out of jail. Nobody want to hire a person that got a lot of felonies. But with God, you trust the Holy Spirit. He will show you how to get from where you at now to where he, where he wants you at eventually. I mean, because I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. I'm, I, I, work, I work where I work at. I don't make a whole lot of money, but God is able to, he's been taking care of us. Taking care of us for, for the for the years we pay over a thousand dollars a month in this house. I'm not going into all my personal things, but but I thank God. I thank God for His grace that He's He's been taking care of us, and that's what we. My wife and I we learn to lean on the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Uh, and as I lean on Him more and learn to walk with Him, I notice my capacity is getting stronger. I, I don't know if I was probably around four <laughs> percent. But with the Holy Spirit, I'm moving past up to 10%. And, and I'm teaching my son now how to lean on the Holy Spirit so he can keep his, his brain capacity growing to where he's supposed to be. Because all of us are supposed to be walking in a higher mentality rate than we are when you become Christians. But the reason why a lot of us are not where we're supposed to be is because the way we've been taught. A lot of false doctrine. Uh, what about healing? Now, check this out. A lot of us say, well, okay, I believe God heals. I really do believe God heals. But I don't believe he heals all the time. Because if he heals all the time, what about this person? And what about this person? I know this lady. She loved God and she died of cancer. Now, God got 
God did that. God took her out of here. All I can see in the situation, my mom, she died in my arms when I was given a CPR, and I was, I was, I was, I was devastated during that time. That was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, whatever. And uh, so it's like, but now that I know the truth, I know where she. I I go back and I know where my mom was walking at the time. She didn't believe that it was God's will for her to be healed. Do so you think God is just gonna push something on, push something on you and make you? No, He's not. Holy Spirit is not gonna make you live right. That's not. And he's your helper. He's not gonna force you to put those, take those drugs and 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 don't take them. He just take. Oh, I, I just feel like my hands is being taken over. I, I won't touch the drugs no more. No, he's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. Well, I'm a, I just can't, man. Look, man. Look, I'm a man. I got to have sex with these women and this and that. And uh, I want God to just do something to me, make me whatever, so I won't do those things. No, 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 no. As you begin to trust him with faith, the Holy Spirit will begin to show you how you can overcome you. And that's the wonderful thing about it. You, the, I guess... What really turned me on to this message, what I'm talking about, was not only Adam's brain capacity, and not only that God began to talk to Adam a different way because he wasn't a child of God, but it's we're now in Christ. We're now born again. And so that means because I'm in Christ, I have access to whatever Jesus had when he walked the earth. I don't see a lot of people say, well, my mama was poor. My granddaddy was poor. My great, great, great granddaddy was really poor. Oh, I'm a black man, white man trying to take over, all those stupid stuff. And, and and really what it is, is the camera is not on what happened then necessarily. It's on you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to trust God to get out of that mindset and begin to receive what he's already given you? That's what faith is. Faith is basically believing and acting on what he's already done for you. The reason I brought healing up was that healing belongs to the body of Christ. It belongs to the world. Nine times out of ten, when I pray for people in the world, when I say world, I mean unbelievers, his power shows up more. Be honest with you, and please don't get mad at me. Christians really shouldn't be sick. Think about that. Christians really should not be sick. <coughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> no, if as we learn to follow the Holy Spirit on the inside of us as a result of praying in tongues, he's going to begin to show us how we can stay healthy. Be honest, I work where I work at, I see nothing but Christians in there. And, uh, and I also see a lot of different belief systems. But I'm not. At, I don't go to my job preaching to everybody. That's probably why I'm still working there because I don't preach to people on the job. That's not my response. I'm not there to preach. I'm there to live the life of a Christian to a person. If I go there telling people they need to get this, they need to get saved, but they they need to fire me because that means talk is cheap. What they normally used to say in the past: an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. I don't want to be an empty wagon. I'd rather walk it and live it, and then they come to me and ask me, who are you? Why do you smile all the time? Why do you treat people so nicely? And then I can say, that's because I'm a Christian. And I don't have to tell them any doctrines of praying in tongues. You need to do this. I don't do that. I have won so many people over to the Lord just by being myself. And that's what I... That's we are children of God. We are in Christ. We are in the family of God. And that what I'm going to do for the next week or two or the next time I teach, I'm going to go down a lot of these different scriptures on in Christ. And I would like for you all to begin to study on those subjects of uh, scriptures concerned in the, in the epistle of the Bible, the New Testament, about this. And you have this because you're a child of God in Christ, you have this. And all these things that we, we see, it belongs to us as a family. So uh, that's why I made this statement a while back. Some people questioned me on it because they, they said it didn't make sense. Uh, I said that, um, uh, what did I, how did I say it? I said that because I'm a child of God, I don't pray for my needs anymore. 
um, they said, well, no, the Bible says that you, I said, I, I'm not coming against when the word of God says that you have not because you ask not. I say to myself, I, I have not because I claim not. I don't confess not. Because to me, and I'm not cutting the scriptures up. I'm just only touching this. We're going to get on that as time go on. What, what did he really meant by that? But to me, if you're asking for something, that's telling me that you really don't know it belongs to you. And if you really don't know it belongs to you, you won't ever receive it. Because faith begins as the will of God is revealed to you. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, a lot of us are praying for things that he's already given us. I can see if I'm praying, I say, Lord, I want to I go to the moon. Lord, in Jesus' name, let me go to the moon. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to the moon, but I'm just saying that um, anything that's in line with the word of God that's in Christ is already uh, given to us. What we need to do is develop our faith in that subject that we believe in God and begin to call it ours. That's how I what you want to call pray. I communicate to the I say, Lord, I claim this in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. I have it. The Bible says whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever I loose on earth is loose in heaven. So what is that saying? Whatsoever I claim that's in line with your word, heaven is already in agreement with it. And whatsoever I loose on earth is already loose because I have the, the authority to loose it because the word said I can do that and it's, and heaven is backing me up because they are it's already done. So basically we're walking a puzzle that's already finished for us because of Jesus. He's the Alpha and the Omega, our Father. So in other words, what we're doing because of Jesus is already been done for us. What we're doing is less talking or less speaking and more worrying and more complaining. You have to remember you have authority down here. So if you believe you're you believe you're never gonna find a job and you saying out of your mouth that you're not gonna find a job, guess what? You should have what you say. If you believe that you're gonna find a job, it doesn't matter if nobody in your city is working. God's gonna create a job just for you because you believe him. I heard one minister say that God will move over a thousand people just to get to a person that has faith. And the only way you can please God is with faith. So you're basically believing because you have authority. And the way your authority operates is the way you speak. So I believe that I'm a man of God. I believe that I'm not going to be taken out with temptations or whatever. I believe that I lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Guess what? You've given the Holy Spirit exactly what he needs to take you to the next level. I believe God that this message really touched a lot of you all this is just basically the introduction not for tonight but uh, the next time I teach I'm gonna go into deeper deeper depths of the in Christ scriptures so a lot of you all might be coming on uh, um, Ubu the program I usually pray for people on so we are eventually gonna be I've been saying it for weeks but we haven't really got started yet we're gonna be eventually moving over to uh, Google Plus because um, it's, it's a lot better uh, so I, I would advise some of you all that are watching this program on YouTube or whatever if you want me to pray for you after these after I teach here why don't you go to Google uh, Google I mean go ahead and set your account up for Google Plus in the next few weeks we're gonna be switching over uh, to Google Plus but right now we have Google O O V O O and I usually pray for the people that's on there so, you know, I'm trusting that you guys enjoy what I'm teaching on. It's going to get better. <laughs> and uh, I, I thank God for you all. I'm so used to my, my wife being right here and I can say, hey, honey, lift me up now. <laughs> so so I feel kind of like, I feel like Adam, when he committed to sin, he's naked here. Uh, anyway, that's my, one of my jokes there. Anyway, it didn't go over very well, but that's okay. I love you guys. I guess I see most of you guys in just a few minutes. Um, God bless you, and I trust that this message really touched your heart. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.